This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated them for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Don't go anywhere to stay tuned. Get ready to take a trip down every lane. Japanese light gun right here. See if we can get a little bit more light in here. It's a little gloomy outside today. So this is about all the light that we're, we're gonna have for this video. Unfortunately, it's very rainy outside. It's a great day to play Sega Saturn games. Check out that old school Japanese Sega Saturn logo right there. Now this was in storage for a little while, so it does have a little bit of dust here and there. Let's see what the uh, model says right here. Let's see if we can get that focused. It's a HSS0152, so that's the model number, you see it right there. Made in Japan, Sega Enterprise, you got the Sega logo. At the end of the light gun right there, you can see the little light gun right there, kind of looks like the, uh, the end of the NES one. So yeah, I'm going to be exercising my First Amendment with the Sega Saturn light gun. And you may notice that the Sega Saturn Japanese light gun does not have the orange tip at the end. The, uh, the American one, I believe, does have the orange tip because I believe all light guns required to have some sort of colored orange tip at the end so that it's identified as a toy. And check out the nice molding of the Japanese Sega Saturn light gun. Look how big that is. It's pretty big. This is like your reload button right here. Get your trigger button right there. It's very clicky. You hear that? If you don't want to reload there, you can put all your bullets in there. That's how this comes out. Just kidding. But yeah, look at the nice uh, design on this. You have your little safety switch right there. It doesn't actually work, but it's there. You have the Sega logo right there. You have the little aiming little thing right there. And you can actually aim forward and shoot. Yeah, so let's put this down for a second. See what games I have available on hand. And here's a game I actually never actually played. I own it, but I actually never got a chance to play it. I wonder if this actually works with it. It's definitely a light gun game. It's uh, Henry Explorers. I also have House of the Dead and uh, Virtual Cop games. We'll try to try that out as well. Uh, I have that in a binder somewhere. It's probably over here. Let's see. For now, let's. Take a look at Sega Saturn games right here. Yeah, it's a turn away. Okay, so we have to face the four a little bit. Alright, so somewhere in here I have House of the Dead and uh, Virtual Cop. Uh, let's see. Got a lot, of, a lot of Sega Saturn games. And as you can see right there, there's House of the Dead. And up here, we got Virtual Cop 1 and 2. So they're real games, definitely. And we're going to probably try all four of them, I guess. Because we have Henry Explorers. We'll try that one out too. And I believe that's the only Sega Saturn Lincoln games I own, but they are a blast to play. So. Let's uh, show you the uh, Sega Saturn, oh, actually that's the NES, the Sega Saturn is right there. It's a little dark today, I don't know what's going on, but that's actually, if I can pull this out, I don't know if you can see it, there's an action replay, this is a, 
probably can't see it, but that's a Japanese Sega Saturn. So we're going to set up the camera, we're going to record, let's see what happens. And this is a Hitachi CRT. So it works perfect with light guns. That's the pause screen right there. This is your reload, you have to pretty much push up like that. The aiming actually works quite well on this. This is quite accurate. This is actually quite good. I forgot how great the uh, Sega Saturn Lake Gun is. It's actually very, very nice. And uh, what better way to play this game but on a Hitachi TV that's like tremendously old but still works perfect. This TV actually existed, uh, they, I think it was manufactured in 84. So you do the math, it's like over 35 years old. So yeah, this definitely works quite well. Gives you a real awesome arcade experience. I can, I can play this all day long, but let's try another game out real quick. Let's see if we can back it up a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, let's freaking head out. His brain's... Get it, get it. Oh. You can tell that this game pushed the Sega Center to its limits. He had a little bit of a uh, little frame rate there, but it's very, very much playable. Now you may be asking, is this easier than playing with a standard six-button controller? I would say so. You just aim and shoot and that's it. I think it is easier playing it with two games. Like this. It's definitely easier. Yeah. So yeah, you got a life up, I saved that guy right there. So yeah, this is uh, House of the Dead, using the light gun. It actually works quite well, it's an awesome game. So now let's try Henry Explorers. I have never played this before, I bought it a while ago. Oh wow, this is nuts. I mean, right away, this... Yeah, this is crazy. I am already a fan of this game, and I only played it for like two minutes. Not even. That's the pause spot right there, so... I'm gonna cover. Yeah. I kind of like that this game's like half 2D, half 3D. I like that. There's a game on the PlayStation called Project Horned Owl that's kind of the same way. It's a light gun game. I was, I was always a fan of that game as well. This is pretty cool. So far, it's really awesome. Look at that. Look at this gargoyle looking thing. Look at that. It looks really, really awesome on the Sega Saturn. Look at the detail. 3D games being played on the Sega Saturn. Definitely awesome detail. Look at that. Look at the amazing detail. Get the bones excluding. What a fantastic hidden gem on the Sega Saturn. Look at this. I'm glad I bought this. I really don't know how much I paid for it. I forgot I actually owned the game. Yeah, I got like a shotgun. Oh, I gotta get over. Yeah, so that's uh, Henry Explorers on the Sega Saturn, the Japanese version of the game. I know the American version goes by a different name off the top of my head. I don't know what the hell the name is. I forgot I had that game. And this is the first time I actually played the game. I probably had the game for years. Sitting in storage inside the case, and it was not in the binder. What a nice hidden gem that was. And uh, the Sega Saturn Light Gun performs quite well. It gives you the true arcade experience that you would experience in the arcade. If you have a nice old CRT TV, like the uh, Hitachi right here, probably one of the best gaming TVs in my opinion. Like it works perfect with light gun games. Gale Racer on the Sega Saturn. It's a bit of an obscure racing game for the Sega Saturn. Not, not that common at all. Now, I picked this one up quite a long time ago, probably over 10 years ago. It's been in my collection for a while. And uh, time to time, I do enjoy playing this game. Now, this game is like a very, very interesting uh, racing game. It kind of uses all 2D graphics. There's nothing really 3D in this game at all, but it looks really good, and you'll see that in a second. 
But it looks like on the back of this cover right here, the Gale Racer uh, case, they kind of try to, they, they, they try, <laughs> look at this, they kind of fool you a little bit. They kind of try to make it look like it's 3D. And that looks like really nice graphics, look at that. But in reality, that's how it looks. Let's see if you get a little closer right there, it's all 2D. Everything's 2D in the game. It has like a traditional 2D, like racing look to it. And it looks really good. And you will see that soon. I'm going to be playing that on the uh, CRT. And uh, there's the, uh, the CD right there. Nice color logo right there embedded on the actual disc. And they even added like a bit of the 3D screenshot looking stuff right there, but it's not 3D. So I can kind of see what they're doing here. They're trying to brainwash you into thinking that it's 3D, but it's not. And that's the uh, the front cover, as we saw before. Let's take a look at that. Got the car. The car looks really, really crazy, futuristic looking. Got the uh, the logo right there. It has that nice raster looking graphics with the uh, dark red, whatever you want to call that. It kind of pops out. And it kind of looks like something you would see on the Atari. Let's uh, take a look inside the manual here. Never actually opened this manual up. This is the first time I'm doing it in over 10 years. Got a nice little graphic right there that tells you how to insert the disc into the Sega Saturn. Just in case you uh, you can't figure that out, it, it, the manual actually tells you how to do it right there. It tells you exactly how to insert the disc. And it kind of looks awkward. It kind of looks like they're inserting the disc from, from standing behind the console their hand like this, trying to put the disc in, like, what the hell? I don't think we will be doing that. Okay, so we have the uh, controller right there, we got the, another really cool Sega Saturn illustration right there, look at that. So this game is definitely two players, you have player one and player two. Got the Gale Racer title screen right there, before we even, uh, open or put the game on you can see it right there so what else do we have in this got the uh, button configurations and the action menu I like how the manual is like a little English but then the rest of it's Japanese for the exception of a few things right here like this whole page right here is Japanese except for type C, type B, and type A. That always confused me, so I guess... And look at this, this is all English. So I guess in Japan they can read both English and Japanese. And there we have a, uh, a pretty fair screenshot right there, that's what the game looks like. And uh, it looks much better in motion than it does on a screenshot, so wait till you see it in motion. Now, yeah, you can use a, a rain wiper in this game, too. Now, yeah, this shows you all kinds of stuff right here. It's actually quite a few pages in this manual, considering how thin the manual is. Got the time attack. You have the uh, Gale Racer thing right there. Like, it's like a little animation of it blowing up or something. It's weird. And we got Sonic the Hedgehog right there with a, with a phone. I guess if you need help playing the game, if you can't figure out like on page one how to insert the game into your machine, you can call Sonic the Hedgehog and he'll help you out. He'll tell you exactly how to insert that disc. Check that out. There's several numbers. So, you know, if you don't get connected to one, you can call the other member up. And that's uh, the Kale Racer manual. That's actually pretty cool. So I insert this back in. Is it, I wonder if this is a... Uh, like who developed this game? It doesn't really say here. I guess this is definitely a Sega game. So this game, we'll see if it says right here. Uh, I guess it was made in 94, so it's definitely an earlier game. It's probably probably released on the uh, Saturn a little bit later than that, but I guess... 
Saturn came out in 94 in Japan, so it might be possible that this game actually did come out that early. Now, this might be an actual Sega developed game. I'll have to look that up, but... Yeah, let's head over to the Sega Saturn and let's play some Gale Racer. Alright, so we're going to be playing the Gale Racers. Or Gale Racer, that is. And, uh... Let's get it inside the Sega Saturn. We've got the uh, controller already right here. We're plugging that in right here. The Sega Saturn and have a lot less trouble than the uh, the PlayStation. And uh, we're previously playing Tomb Raider in here. We'll put that right up here. So I don't want to scratch the disc. And get ready to play some Gale Racer. And uh, as mentioned, to these sprites. And uh, I must say, for a 2D sprites, this looks pretty damn good. <laughs> it looks really good. It's something that the Sega Saturn could actually pull off. It looks really good, actually. Look at this rival. Boom! Bump into him and knock him off the track. Yeah, that's like that. You got the little Sonic thing hanging off the, the mirror right there, swinging back and forth. Some pretty cool looking detail. So swinging back and forth, check that out. We gotta get to a to a checkpoint. I think we made it to the end. Okay, so that's area one of one. And now we're going to another area over here, the desert. Oh my God! There's like oncoming traffic. Oh man, it's really really intense. You don't know who's coming towards you or what. We got all kinds of vehicles and, uh, oh, oh, this is nuts. <laughs> the controls are pretty good on it, so you, oh, man. We have the arrival car right there. If we just make it to the finish line, we'll be okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll tell you, this truck is not easy at all. Alright, so we made it to that track, and you notice that the loading screens are like hardly anything at all. And we gained a whole bunch of like Sega Sonic the Hedgehog mascots right there, as you can see. And we got the rival car right there. Now, this game is actually pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I actually like this game a lot. Every so often I'll pop this in and play it on Saturn and I definitely enjoy it. Oh no, this truck is an asshole. And I died again, oh my god. That's so crazy. We got another rain level over right here. And we got thunder and lightning, oh boy. Hopefully we don't get tornadoes. It seems like some really treacherous, treacherous weather going on here. And now we're in a place called Lincoln. Oh god, how do I put my headlights on? Oh, you have to hold down the uh, the left shoulder button to put your headlights on. I should have done that at, at the uh, Las Vegas level. I would have made, made things a lot easier, but I completely forgot that you can actually do that. So not only do you have wipers, but you have headlights. Now I'm not sure what type of graphical technique they use on this game. As far as the 2D graphics go, but it's definitely, it works really well on the Saturn. It looks nice. 
So on this level, we're off to a, a rocky start. Oh my god. Let's see if we can get around here. And uh, that's the second time I drove past the car that had a lot of smoke coming out of it. Oh man, we got the police going after us. Oh man, what the hell? Now we're in a police chase. This vehicle has like an unlimited amount of gas. We drive like halfway across. Oh my god. You saw some vehicle damage right there. That's pretty crazy. Looks like we're inside of a tunnel. Alright, so once you get over here, yeah, there's like some sort of either a train or a uh, truck or a bus laid out in the middle. Oh my god. That's not good. Yeah, we're gonna have to get back on the road. So I know that somewhere over here there is a uh, something that's on, on that track. I just passed it. And I made it to the end. Uh, that rival vehicle hit me and he spun out. He did it again. What an idiot. I and mean, this definitely looks like, like a Chicago or Detroit or something like that. Looks like you have the Sears Tower over there in the background. Now this game is pretty addictive. Oh my god, what the hell is that? It's another one of those vehicles that are smoking. And I don't know if we're going to make it to the end. See if we can do it. Oh no. And I don't know if I have any uh, continues left, and I don't think I do. Let's see what happens here. So, yeah, it starts over at the beginning. So, that is Gale Racer. On the Sega Saturn, we almost played the game all the way through. I'll say we probably got more than halfway through the game. Uh, it's pretty fun. Definitely recommend picking up Gale Racer on the Saturn if you want a cool, if you want a really cool, unique racer. Uh, it's definitely like a 2D sprite style racing game. It's actually really cool. Uh, nice way to demonstrate your Sega Saturn with the, the power of 2D sprites. It's uh, pretty awesome. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment down below and what, what you think about Gale Racer. I think it's pretty cool. And then we got the uh, title screen. Old Japan Pro Wrestling featuring Virtual. And uh, this is actually a nice hidden gem on the uh, Saturn. Not too many people know about this game. So you have a one-player mode, featuring mode, training mode, options, and uh, it's been a while since I played this, but we'll just jump right in, and we'll try to play the uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling here, Wrestling Week on Gaming Plus Empire. And you got a various amount of different wrestlers here. We have, uh, let's see. So we got the uh, giant Papa. We got Dr. Death, Steve Williams, Dan Hansen. And, uh, who is this? I I know this is John Laurinaitis right here. We got a uh, virtual fighter character right there. Two of them right here. And we got various other Japanese wrestlers. Uh, Kabashi. Masawa. I'm reading the uh, the cover of the case, so. You have uh, Ace, Wolf, Jeffrey, which is probably Virtual Fighter characters. Uh, let's see. Akiyama. We're going to choose a wrestler. And we're going to choose Stan Hansen. Good old Stan Hansen. You can see his move right there 4 4 day. And I guess that's the uh, tournament bracket. I have to go through a 
few guys there, and eventually number tournament number four, or match number four, I have to fight a virtual fighter character. Alright, we got big old Stan Hansen making his way to the ring. Amazing Sega Saturn graphics right there, that was awesome. <laughs> there, there should have been more 3D wrestling games on the Saturn, it actually looks pretty good. It's a damn good character model. Let's see, it looks like Stan Hansen. Check that out. We got all the uh, Japanese people in the crowd. They're dead silent. They don't want to mess with Stan Hansen. Let's get the sound up a little bit here. We got... Yeah, you're the Japanese wrestler right here making his way to the ring. You can see the graphics look pretty good. He's doing a little taunt right there. Let's see what happens. You got the awesome uh, Japanese versus screen right there that you would normally see on uh, wrestling from during that era. You got Stan Hansen doing his little pre-match taunt. You got the awesome ring announcing. Really, really good audio. Good job. I mean, the graphics look actually quite awesome on this game. <laughs> it's actually pretty good so far. I played this game uh, every once in a while. I don't play it all the time, but every time I play it, it amuses me. It impresses me, like how good it looks. Crap out of you. No mess with Stan Hansen. And Stan Hansen's brutalizing this guy. Poor guy. Say Akiyama, you can see the that's who we're fighting right here. He's picking him up so I can beat him up some more. Oh what a power bomb! Man. This guy, Akiyama, had enough. And he threw Stan Hansen straight to the mat. He threw him to the... Oh, he did a... Like a drop kick to the back of his head. So it was like a... Oh! It's like a... German suplex type thing going on there. Stan Hansen did not want to sell that suplex. He's doing some strong style. What a great game this is. The controls are actually pretty good, too. I'm using a standard six button Saturn controller. Which all Saturn controllers are six button, but. Oh my god, what the hell is that? He is definitely not messing around. Oh man. What a cool pinfall that was. That was actually quite awesome. And Stan Hansen's trying to put him to sleep. You can see right there, Yami Akiyama is not having that one bit. Oh no, T-Bone Suplex. Oh man. And we got, oh man, I'm still like a bridge pin right here. No, no, kick out, kick out. Oh man, he beat Stan Hansen, that piece of crap. So I have not played this game in probably over a year. We can tell as soon as you pick it to get show up and start playing it, it's like, wow, this game is actually pretty cool. That's it, I'm gonna finish him off right here. This is it. No! Stop reversing me, you bastard! What the hell? That's it! That better be it. There's no getting up after this. Oh my god, what a match. That was a hard match. That was match number nine, as you can see at the top of the screen. Yeah, I gotta kill him a little bit more. You see there? This guy's a dirt bag. He wants to try to fight back. I get to the center of the ring here. Let's see if we can finish him off. Oh no! You gotta be kidding me.
And of course, now we have a problem because we're near the ropes. We can't really fish them off near the ropes. So we're going to have to back up a little bit. Brick is back. Maybe we can pin him here, hopefully. Two! Oh my god, he kicked out! You gotta be kidding me. He had no life. That's bullshit. Yes! Pin him! Yeah, I got him. Man, that was crazy. Pin him, pin him, pin him. Oh my god. First of all, this guy had no... He had no health. It's the only way that we're going to be able to survive is if we come outside the ring. This guy's a piece of shit. Break his back a little bit and then pin him. Oh my god, that was a close call. Wow. I thought I was gonna lose. That was one of the most challenging wrestling matches in any wrestling game I've ever played. So now what happens? That's the, the 11th match. Alright, we get a, like a little victory video here. Oh, we get the credits. Let's watch the credits. We beat the game. What the hell is that? Is that a shark? What's that, Jeffrey? They're doing like a little video on Jeffrey here from uh, Virtual Fighter. He said that Sega Saturn credits are hilarious. It has nothing to do with all Japan Pro Wrestling, but it's fun to watch. Looks like we're going to scuba diving, fishing. Look at that. I feel like I beat Virtual Fighter instead. What a cool game. This game is awesome. And I don't know what that says, but... That might be like a, a game over type screen or something. I, and that is a virtual fighter. Or not virtual fighter, but All Japan Pro Wrestling featuring virtual fighter on the uh, Sega Saturn. What a great game. I would play that again. Now check that out. We got Bug. It's a nice cool little platformer on the Sega Saturn. Exclusive to the Sega Saturn. It's a little dusty on the inside. Got our bug disc right there. Look at that. Got a huge, big ass mango. Now, this probably has never been opened. This actually came from a huge lot that I bought a long time ago. And you can see that the uh, paper and all that stuff has been a little worn out. It has a registration card for Sega. So you have to fill that out, send it into Sega, and then you have. A little black and white manual tells you how to play the game. Now this was definitely stored in a basement, so you can see all the basement debris. You have your picture of your American Sega Saturn with the American little controller right there. Look at that. And now uh, we have ourselves a creature right here. It's a lot of weird looking creatures in this game. Uh, that is an example of the American Sega Saturn controller, and I'm not a big fan of that particular Saturn controller, so I used the Japanese one, but got some screenshots. It's a black and white manual, so it's nothing really fancy. You got a, you know, typical stuff in here. Screenshots telling you how to play the game, and 
course we have an advertisement for a clockwork night. Nice color back. And it, these are nice exclusives on the Sega Saturn, so let's insert that back inside the case right here. See that the uh, the cover has the bug creature on it. And it has this uh, butt right there. They kind of made an emphasis on this big, huge bud, bud, bug, butt. It's kind of hard to say that. A bug butt. And uh, we, <laughs> we have ourselves that weird looking CGI disturbing looking creature right there. I don't know. What yeah, that thing right there. The big teeth. On the back, we have uh, a few screenshots of Bug. And it looks like some sort of platformer for sure. It makes you want to play it. And of course, these are different little fake critics that actually uh, give this game an opinion. Like the uh, Squeak Preview, the Rolling Fleas, instead of Rolling Stones. Uh, I think of this game as almost like Gex. But it's a bug. So uh, let's head over to the Sega Saturn and let's play Bug. Alright, so I can see there we have our Sega Saturn all set up, ready to go. Now we have our six button Japanese controller right here that we will be using. And we are going to be playing the bug in about two seconds. Let me insert this into the console. And uh, let's get ready to play Bug on the Sega Saturn. Let's head over to the CRT. So, we're going to scene number one. Insectia. Now, I kind of compare this more to like Gex than anything else. You can collect all these little things right here. Alright, let's see if we can make it to the end. Collect all these little gems and stuff right here. This is a cool little platform for the Sega Saturn. It gives you an idea of what the Sega Saturn is capable of for as far as platforms go. Let's see if we can walk over here. Nowadays you have uh, platformers like Captain Toad's Adventure on the uh, Switch and Wii U that kind of look similar to what this is right here. That's the same exact area as before. Oh, I died. So that is a uh, bug in the Saturn. We can still play it a little bit here. It's a, it's a pretty fun game. It's just fun just to walk around and see everything. Look at this. It's a really unique platformer. Have to be careful not to get hit by bug crap. All right, let's walk in here and see if we can make it down here without dying. Oh, that thing. Oh, he fell off the thing right there. Oh, this is a hard part. Best bet is probably to kill these things first. All right, we made it across, which is good. Oh, I made it so far and I died. So, just keep in mind, this game is also very frustrating. Bug juice. Here, I saw some bug juice. Alright, so let's see if we can make it all the way back over here again.
Alright, so far it looks like we're doing pretty good. And we made it across without dying, which is good news. Oh, that was pretty close. Now where are we? Alright, we made it to a checkpoint, which is really good. Oh my god, what the hell? Well, that didn't matter because I made it all the way over here. Alright, so we're still in the game. Oh, whoa. This game is like nuts. You can see like enemies just flying out of nowhere. Whoa, what the hell is that? We definitely need to uh, be careful with whatever that is. So I like throw some poop at us. There's a lot of poop thrown in this game. Oh, I died again. Alright, let's give that a try again, and we'll see if we can make it to the end here. I think that is where we have to go over there. I think I see it. We just have to jump off over here and... Oh! Alright, let's walk over here. I believe we might... Oh! I'm gonna end up dying. These stupid bugs keep hitting me. Alright, what is this thing? Oh! That's pretty cool how they fly from the foreground and... Oh, I died again. Damn. I must say that this game is actually pretty fun. Alright, let's try that again. The best thing to do is to study the level and keep going. So I believe we have to go this way. And that bug actually hit me still, so I believe there's another bug up here. to use the buzz on these bees. Oh, they killed me again. Wow. Talk about hard. I got ran over by that boulder. This time we're going to go this way. Actually, this is the way we went the first time and the second time. You know, we... Let's see if we can go this way instead. Maybe it'll be easier for us. Oh no, probably not. <laughs> no, we have to walk all the way over here. Probably not a good idea. Having all that... That shit being thrown at us. Like little, little shit. It's like bug crap. Go down here, you get that bug right there trying to. Oh my god, son of a bitch. Alright. So there's no health bar in this game, so that's one thing that's kind of. A little confusing. Your best bet is to let these things fly by. Oh, that one bug killed me again. Oh my god, this game's frustrating. I'll try it again, and oh, that was so close. Let's 
stupid button still hit me. Alright, we're gonna go here. And we made it past that one bug right there. Oh, and of course this one has to hit me. What a bastard. I ducked! What the hell? Wow, this game is hard. So that is a uh, bug on the Sega Saturn. I used to own Bug 2. I never really owned Bug back in the day, so Bug is pretty hard. Alright, here we are playing Kyrio Tossi on the Sega Saturn. Now here we have the title screen of this game. This is one game that I've actually never really played before. But allegedly, based on what I'm reading, this might be like a Power Stone type game on the Sega Saturn. What the hell? How's this even possible? And it sounds pretty cool. Let's uh, check it out. And that is your uh, main menu right there, which is pretty cool. Look at that. Now these look like uh, your character selection screen, and look at the different characters you can choose here. There's a whole bunch of different characters. And look at that. So we'll, we'll choose to say uh, a character right here. We'll choose that random character. Everything's in Japanese, so you guys have to get through the language barrier playing this game. And uh, that appears to be a stage that we're battling on. There's like four opponents, or three enemies, and one and me. Oh, that fell off! Oh, you see my character right there. And it looks like I can kick another character in the ass. I'm not sure if you can pick up these objects or not. I'm actually trying to figure this out. So you can jump. Okay. Oh, you can grab onto stuff too. Look at that. That is pretty cool. And you can throw the. the oh my god! Look at that. Oh, that that computer guy like tossed me off the edge. So that's the way of winning. It's like Super Smash Brothers style, but with Power Stone type thing going on here. If you walk into the uh, the weapon, you hold on to it, just like that. So you don't even have to really push a button. It's really interesting. This game is actually pretty cool so far. Oh, I think I won! This game is pretty awesome. I've never even played this before. This is actually really cool. I own a lot of Japanese uh, Sega Saturn games. I've never seen this before. This is literally like a Power Stone on the, uh, the Sega Saturn. This is unbelievable. Oh, oh, don't, don't, don't fall off! Oh my god, I almost fell off. Look at that, you can actually use the swing. There's a way of using the swing somehow. There's a lot of crazy stuff you can do in this game. I don't know what he just said, but he doesn't sound like he's a nice guy. Oh, oh, no, that fell off the edge. I'm over there. I almost got confused for a second. No! I fell off the edge. Oh, my God. Okay, you have two computer guys going at it. This game is really good. And the cool thing is it's four players. So if you have a multi-link on your Sega Saturn, you can play this with all four of your friends. Or three of your friends. Plus yourself, and you can have four players. Now let's go out for a second. Let's check out the main menu, see what we get here. Let's check out what this is. Looks like a little gallery right there. This appears to be like an option menu. So we'll just choose any character this time. Let's see if we uh, get a different stage. And we're on the same stage here. But there is definitely a possibility of going to different stages. You just have to beat these uh, enemies a certain amount of time. Oh my god. Don't fall off! Oh no, 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 no! I fell off already. Oh, 
Yeah, this is basically Power Stone on the Sega Saturn. It's pretty awesome. And it's pretty cool. Uh, so if you like Smash Brothers or Power Stone and you have a Sega Saturn, you have a game to play right here. This game is actually pretty awesome. Alright, so I'll tell you where I'm playing the Sega Saturn, as you can see there. And there we go with the bright blue Sega logo right there. And Traveler's Tale. And here we have an introduction for Sonic 3D Blast for the uh, Sega Saturn. Very, very awesome. And here's your main menu for uh, Sonic 3D Blast. Very, very nice colorful main menu as you can see there. We're going to press start. And as you can see here, we have a 3D looking menu. This game was also on Sega Genesis. Uh, there is some quite a few differences between the Genesis and the Sega Saturn version. Uh, especially graphically, the Saturn version is much more superior. Here we have a little map that indicates where we're going to be uh, playing at first. And then we're in Act 1. And in this game, you can use the 3D controller if you want, with the joystick. Exactly what I'm using right now. You can see the bridge in Sonic 3D Blast on the uh, Saturn. It's actually 3D. If you walk back and forth, you can actually see it moving back and forth. On the uh, Genesis version, that really doesn't happen at all. And the music is really awesome. If you listen to the background, the soundtrack is really cool. You do have a little bit of uh, what appears to be rainbow banding right here underneath the rings. So there is a little bit of rainbow banding underneath the shadows. So the whole object of the game is to collect these flickies, which happen to be birds. Uh, believe it or not, the Flickies actually existed before Sonic the Hedgehog. Back in the early 80s, there was a Flicky video game that Sega developed a long time ago. And eventually they brought them back into Sonic the Hedgehog series. And it's been a while since I played this game. And I'd say on each level there's probably about five or six Flickies you have to get. Right now we have three Flickies, and the more you get, the more you have them tailing right behind you right there. Pretty cool. So now we have four flickies. You want to make sure you have enough rings to keep you alive. And I believe that we have a flicky on the goose right there. We have five flickies. And I believe there's one more flicky. Nope, I got them all. But the only thing you have to stand on this little warp zone right here and it brings you to some other area in the map. Make sure you have a lot of rings, because there are certain levels, like bonus levels, that require about 50 rings. The more rings you have, the better it helps you out. For certain enemies, you can actually just roll into them just like that. And it might be actually easier to, um, to actually kill them. So right now we have one Flicky. We have to locate where the other Flickies are. The graphics on this game are quite nice. It's resembling... Sort of like a 16-bit game, but with a mixture of 32-bit at the same time. Uh, it's much, much improved from the 16-bit counterpart in the Genesis. The Genesis version of this game is cool. But this game right here is definitely a much, much better uh, version of the game. So one thing that really stands out about this version of the game is definitely the uh, sound. Much better sound quality than the Genesis. The graphics are reminiscent to the Genesis version, but much better. Uh, the gameplay is pretty close to the same, but there is something about this version of the game that keeps me playing it while this Genesis version was good, but I wasn't as addicted to it as much as this version. There's something definitely about this version that keeps me playing. And this right here is a uh, bonus stage. And we have a 3D bonus stage that's exclusive to the Sega Saturn. You can see the 3D graphics, completely different gameplay than the, uh, the standard game itself. But very, very cool. Uh, the more rings you get, the better it is, because you'll be able to get rewards from uh, collecting as much rings as possible get free guys and whatnot, just like in Super Mario pretty much. So hopefully we'll make out pretty good with that. 
The graphics look really awesome in the uh, bonus stages, as you can see there. Yeah, you can see here we actually have bosses in this game too, so... Make sure you collect some rings, because if you don't have rings, you might get hit. Then it won't do you any good, because you're gonna die. Let's try not to get hit. Son of a bitch. There we go. So now we're gonna have a whole bunch of different explosions occurring and all kinds of crap. The game has a lot of nice looking color, colorful levels. Uh, one of the most atmospheric games back then, I would say. Uh, definitely recommend it if you have the Sega Saturn. One of the best looking games in my opinion. And uh, this game shines on the Saturn much more than the uh, Genesis. Genesis version is not bad. If you have a Genesis, definitely recommend that version also. But I definitely would choose the uh, uh, the Saturn version over the Genesis version. It's just something about it. It's much better. Here. You see the Tomb Raider logo right there? This is the uh, Japanese version of Tomb Raider. So you can see uh, there's something really strange about her hand right there. It looks kind of retorted, like backwards. What the hell? I never noticed that until now. Um, let's check out a few other things here. We've got all the little Tomb Raider graphics right here. We've got the little tomb in the background. We've got the two skulls right there. We've got the broken hand. Uh, you, get, you got that right there. <laughs> Uh, you got the Sega Saturn spine on the side of the, uh, the, the, uh, the manual. You got the, uh, Tomb Raider Japanese lettering right there. It's in red with white letters. The Sega Saturn logo right there. Look at that. On this side, this one thing I like about, uh, Sega Saturn games. You got Japanese on this side and English on that side. Tomb Raiders. Tomb Raiders. Hey, wait a minute. Is this called Tomb Raider or Tomb Raiders? What the hell? I'm confused. Let's go grab the, uh... Let's go grab the, uh, the PlayStation copy. Now I'm really confused. Okay, so this is the PlayStation copy right here. I don't know if I'm going crazy or what. But it's called Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider on the PlayStation, and apparently the Sega Saturn copy is called Tomb Raiders. Tomb Raiders. Yeah, did you see that Tomb Raiders? What the hell? I never noticed that until now. I wonder if the American copy or the European copy on the Sega Saturn is called Tomb Raider or Tomb Raiders. That is really strange. I don't think I own a Japanese PlayStation copy. Let's open this up and let's look at it. Let's check that I got a, a little cheat code right there too. A weapon cheat. That came out of one of those uh, magazines. Alright, so we got the, uh, the manual right here for Tomb Raiders. That's really confusing, kind of, that really throws me off. Alright, so we have different like anime looking characters right there, that's bizarre. We got the Sega Saturn controller right there, which is the same exact one that we're going to be using. We got some nice color screenshots and uh, you know all that good stuff right here. And basically tells you how to play the game in Japanese. I have no idea what that is.
you got all these items right here that you can pick up. And you got Tomb Raider with, with the uh, tight Tomb Raider shorts on right there. Look at that. It's like the only thing that you can spot and see on that page. And, uh, we got the uh, dead dog right there. Oh, actually, no, that dog's still alive. I thought it was dead. You got the bear. You got that. Uh, I think those are bats. You got like a secret passageway thing or a little door entrance thing right there. It's almost like a little strategy guy telling you how to play. You got the water, and the, the water effects on the, the Sega Saturn version is really, really different from the PlayStation version, which you'll see soon, once we get the game inside the machine. And now the disc. It's like a nice gold tint look to it. And now you, you have the little uh, tomb right there in the background. And uh, the hand is not there. You got half of Laura Cross ass right there. A little bit of her hair right there. We got a portion of her arm, and we got Tomb Raiders right there. And it's published by Victor. And uh, Victor's like that RCA company, I think. I th it's kind of strange. It's uh, over here, it's made by Eidos. And uh, yeah, Core Designs, the, the one that developed the game, as far as I can see. So yeah, let's uh, head over to the Sega Saturn. And uh, let's see if we can get this game in there, and let's take a look at Tomb Raiders, Tomb Raiders on the Sega Saturn. Alright, so we're going to be playing Tomb Raiders on the Sega Saturn. It's a little dusty. It's actually open. That's not good. We need to pull a controller out right here. We're using these Japanese gray Sega Saturn controllers, and we're playing the American Sega Saturn with the action replay. Let's see if we can get this up and running. I need the dust to clean this off. I'll do that later. We have no time to be doing that right now. We're going to be playing Tomb Raider. Let's get that Tomb Raider in here. And get ready to play some Tomb Raider on a CRT. That, that thing right there. You get your uh, usual Sega Saturn title screen right here. Wait, this is the Tomb Raider menu. The same thing that you got on the PlayStation except with the uh, Sega Saturn controller right there. Look at that. Let's see if we can make it all the way to the end of the level right here. And the lighting on the Sega Saturn version and the textures look quite a bit different than the, the PlayStation version. So right away, as soon as you walk over here, she's automatically looking in that direction. So they kind of want to restrict you from going over in this direction right here. What exactly is over here anyways, I forgot. So there's not really much over here as you can see. So if we walk over here, there is a button you can push to climb up these walls. As you can see there. And I know over here there's like a wolf or something. Oh, there's bats. Killer bats. And you can see that the uh, the game looks quite a bit darker than the PlayStation version, which is actually better in a way, because it kind of gives it that atmosphere, like you're in a real cave. And over here, it's really, really bright. There must be an opening up there. Yeah, it looks like there is an opening right there. And that bat scared the crap out of me. 
And I feel like the frame rate is better on the Sega Saturn than the PlayStation version for some reason. This definitely seems like it. While we're walking over here, let's check out what's over here. It's been a while since I played this game. Okay, so if you hold down the uh, the left shoulder button, she walks nice and slow. And all the way down here, I'm pretty sure there's a pack of wolves down here somewhere. And more than likely, they're gonna come out and try to try to they're gonna try to attack me and eat me. Okay, maybe not. Maybe that's not the right spot. You can see right here, it's definitely a lot darker than the PlayStation version. The PlayStation version is more lit. Now, this game actually plays quite well on the say, Saturn. And it goes to show you that the Saturn was really ca uh, capable of doing a lot of really good 3D stuff right here. It looks pretty good. Alright, so there is, so you can't go in there. Let's take a look at how this looks right here. This looks like it's made out of, uh, look at that. You can see you can look straight through its flat textures. It looks like bamboo sticks. So let's go over here. And again, this game's over 20 years old, so it's actually quite impressive. Let's go up here for a second, let's look around and see what we got here. Oh yeah, this is the area that has uh, wolves. Be real careful, because they will attack you, and the frame rate is dropping quite a bit. So this is one area where the Sega Saturn was having a bit of an issue. I'm surprised that the frame rate's dropping that much. You know what it is? It's such a large open area. And now this must have been highly complicated to actually do on the Sega Saturn. So far it looks oh holy shit. Oh my god, there's what the hell this for? There's five! I always find it funny when these... It's not funny to kill an animal. By all means, but... In this game... <laughs> they land on their backs, their feet straight up in the air. And I find that to be a little funny. And you go underneath the water, you don't see that, but... If you look up, up above the water, everything looks wavy. So it's like the opposite effect. Then you look down, everything underneath the water looks wavy. So that's something that the Sega Saturn could actually do. That's actually pretty cool. I have no idea what type of graphical trick that is. And if you look at this right here, this always confused me, but on this wall, I could I could swear that's E.T. That looks like E.T. to me, I don't know why. But why is there a picture of E.T. on this wall? I used to notice that on the PlayStation version also. That used to always like confuse the shit out of me. Like why is there E.T. in Tomb Raider? Look, there's like more E.T.s over there painted on the wall. I mean, maybe they're not painted, they're actually like sculpted into the wall. Like they're I don't know. It's weird. Really weird. Let's go down here. And enjoy the uh, nice view of Laura Croft swimming in the water. Uh, let's see here, we're going up to here. What, what do we got here? Oh, 
I wonder if we can like imagine if there was a game like Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver that uh, would be ported to Sega Saturn. That'd be crazy. We got this a uh, stick. We have to open that up. Oh no, we have to go back to the ET room. Hopefully we don't run out of the air. Yeah, we are running out of air, as you can see right there. Let's go back up here for a second. Catch our breath. Holy crap. Oh, I died right, I was right there. Oh my god. This whole, the whole purpose of this is to practice. So let's see if you come up over here. You want to jump over there. And for some reason she did not grab onto that. And of course we have the pool. And check out this area right here. This looks pretty cool. She actually has this inside of her house. That's pretty awesome. I usually play Tomb Raider on the PlayStation. Usually Tomb Raider is notorious for being played on PlayStation, but I think that this is actually a pretty cool copy of Tomb Raider that I came across. Wing Arms on the Sega Saturn. Now check out that cool looking uh, label art, box art right there. Got a whole bunch of different warplanes flying around and doing some crazy stuff right here. Got explosions going on on the carrier. Got Wing Arms. Yeah, look at that. Got a little bit of Japanese right there, and got a few screenshots right here. Looks like some sort of simulator. Look at that. That's pretty cool looking. It's a Sega Sound Library by Invasion, and it says Simpack Sega, and there's all kinds of stuff written here. It's like 95. So, this is obviously a Japanese game right here. I play mostly Japanese Sega Saturn games. Is they're usually a lot less expensive to buy, and there's a lot more. Look at that pixelated plane. That is incredibly pixelated. Got a nice little illustration of the Sega Saturn, how to put the disc inside your Sega Saturn. Make sure you do it correctly, so you don't, you know, mess up. And then we got a few nice color il illustrations of the uh, planes, and looks like we got a general or someone right here. Got a carrier. And it's telling you that you can play your game on the six button Saturn controller, or you can use that big, huge thing right there, which is probably fun. I should definitely track down one of those. Uh, those controllers and tried this game out. It's like the wing arm uh, title screen right there. And it's one game I had never really played too much before, but there we got the button configuration right there. You can definitely see a little bit of how this game plays. Let's see if the camera wants to focus a little bit. And then, of course, you have that big, huge monstrosity of a controller. And uh, it looks pretty cool. I never actually, I've mean, played this a few times. It's been in my collection for a little while, but never really cared to play. And you got the pictures of all the different planes here. Look at this. And it tells you exactly what they are and all that stuff. It gives you the specs. They have stats. Look at that, yeah, look at that. Got some crazy stuff there. That's some pretty cool looking lighting right there. I don't know what's going on there, but that's cool looking. No, I'm pretty darn impressed so far by the manual. And you got 
Sonic the Hedgehog right there with his old cell phone. That might be a cordless phone, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, here is the back of the manual. Got a few more nice looking screenshots. So that's wing arms. Uh, let's head over to the Sega Saturn and let's see exactly what wing arms is all about. So as you can see here, we have our Sega Saturn, our North American Sega Saturn. We have our Japanese controller though. So definitely use a Japanese controller. Maybe we'll try the 3D controller as well. So we got our uh, nice Sega Saturn controller right there. You can see that I put some lights in the cabinet so you can actually see the console illuminate right there. You can see like the action replay in the background. It's a nice little view. I'm going to plug this controller in the right here. Sega Saturn is probably by far one of my favorite 32-bit consoles. Definitely have a uh, lot of love for the Sega Saturn. And there we have the console open, ready for disc insertion. You can see that the disc's in really good shape. Wing arms, no scratches. Maybe a few minor little smudges here and there, but nothing really crazy going on here, so put that in there. And now let's meet over by the CRT TV. So let's pick our uh, plane right here. Alright, so the uh, first mission is pretty much as you see here, we have to pull these guys up. Now that was pretty fun. And we got the. Oh my god, what the hell? Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh my god. I took him out while this guy's trying to seek me out. That was actually pretty cool. And this guy over here is trying his best to try to take me out. It looks like we have these mounted gauntlet guns that keep shooting at me. They're like on these little pegs. This looks like some sort of like sea military base. I got this like really crazy looking thing right here. Oh, I definitely did something here because uh, I think there's these little things that keep shooting. Hey, that's on fire, okay, I see that. And over here. Right, let's go over here for a second. Let's kill whatever's on here. Turn back around and let's see if we have a better picture of what's going on here. It's kind of hard to make out what you're supposed to be taking out. Okay, so this is probably better, I guess. Wait. Did I just pull that whole thing up? Okay, I guess I might have actually blown it up. <laughs> that was weird. Alright, so we got something going on over here. What is this? Oh, it's a freaking carrier. Look at that. That is cool. That is really cool. Look at that. So this is the enemy's carrier right here. 
which I am going to actually blow up in a second. Let's see. We turn ourselves all the way around here. See if we can get up on here. Of course, I'm playing really, really bad right now. I'm trying to. Oh, did I blow it up? Yeah, that was awesome. This one, that's oh wow! Look at this. Now that is definitely different. We're not flying over the water anymore. If you guys enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane. And you want to see more Sega Saturn games, give a thumbs up and comment down below. And uh, let me know what you think of Wing Arms. This is actually pretty interesting. A WrestleMania the arcade game on the Sega Saturn. And we're going to be playing that with the action replay. We're going to try to make our lives a little easier and see if we can beat the game. Make it much more easier to play using the action replay. So, uh, no manual, nothing crazy here, just a paper envelope. Let's head over to the Sega Saturn and uh, let's play WrestleMania the Arcade game. We've got our good old fashioned American Sega Saturn right here. Let's pop the disc in first. We've got our paper sleeve. Get that in there and we got our action replay right here. We're going to pop that in there. Get that in there. Let's see if we can... There we go. It's about time. And let's find out what kind of shenanigans we can do at WrestleMania the arcade game. You never know. Let's uh, head over to the CRT. Got WrestleMania title screen right there with the cool music. Got the cool WWF loading screen right there that's only on the uh, Sega Saturn version. We're definitely going to pick Razor Ramon and for the World Wrestling Federation belt. And another cool looking loading screen we got right there. That's back when the WWE was actually good. Now, uh, one thing that you can notice on the uh, Sega Saturn version is the Sega Saturn version does not have any shadows at all. No rope shadows, no shadows for the uh, the wrestlers, there's no shadows. It's just really weird. I don't know if the programmers had trouble with shadows or what, but just no shadows. The PlayStation version has shadows. Actually, there is shadows. You can see it right there. What the hell? Wait a minute. What the hell? I don't have any life on my bar at all. You see a punch and punch, punch and keep punching him. And that was perfect. What a rip off! Got the uh Razor Ramon showing off out there. What the hell is that? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What the hell is the Undertaker doing? Did you see that? That was crazy. Oh my god, what the hell is the Undertaker doing? Looks like a battle royal going on out here. I hate when Vince does that noise. That. Oh, Whatever the hell that is. Oh my god, oh! Stupid ass, Doink the Clown killed his own partner almost. 
There we go with Vince McMahon with that noise again. That's so cringy. Oh my god. Let me see here. Yeah, Yokozuna is trying to beat the shit out of me. Oh my god, he's killing me with the hammer. Oh, Yokozuna, the time expired with the drop kick to his face. Let's see what we got going on here. We're almost making it to the end. This is the final match. And it looks like Bret Hart's holding the belt. You can see Bret Hart holding the belt right there. That's pretty cool. I did not notice that until now. The WrestleMania Challenge. This is the ultimate challenge right here. Let's see if we can uh, beat the WrestleMania Challenge. And here we go. We're about to win the belt. Good evening, everyone. This is Ben Stoppard and me, Jerry the King Lawler. Watch this. To the face. The audio sounds a lot more crisp on the Sega Saturn, by the way. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my god, what the hell is that? It's like Bam Bam Bigelow is trying to kill me. Wow, the, the, the difficulty is definitely, uh, what the hell is happening here? Is this like a battle royal mode or something? Shawn Michaels is in the ring now. So we got seven opponents, so this is like a battle royal of some sort, like a gauntlet match. Oh my god. I'll tell you what, if you can survive this without a game shark, you have to be a master at executing all the moves. And there we go with Bret Hart being hit by Shawn Michaels again. And what do we got here? It looks like Face Ramon. Uh, it looks like the Undertaker just got in the ring. So in order to win the, the WWF title, you have to get your like ass kicked in by like every single WWF superstar in the roster. Oh my god, here we go. Now I've got five more opponents to go. Four more opponents to go here. What the hell? So there's four more opponents. Your best bet is try to use a drop kick. And uh, two more opponents left. Oh boy. Point the clown. So we have to kill Doink the Clown, which should be fairly easy. Oh, 
Oh my god, Dork the Clown sucks. Is that it? Oh my god. Wait, do I have to do that twice? No way. Oh, here we go. We got some pyro. The World Wrestling Federation Champion. You're the new WWF World Champion. Your name will forever... Will forever among the greatest wrestlers of all time. Your name will live forever among the, the greatest wrestlers of all time. I kind of did not read that correctly. I thought... I was reading that wrong, but I was reading it wrong. And uh, that was that. That was WrestleMania the arcade game. Great 90s wrestling game. Available on Genesis, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, and Saturn. It would have been cool to see it on Nintendo 64. But. The uh, best version of this game is the uh, Saturn and PlayStation version. And uh, right here I beat it using the Action Replay Game Shark on the Sega Saturn. Pretty cool. If you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what you think. And stay tuned for more awesome Sega Saturn videos coming soon. And we'll be using the Action Replay if it works.